Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to be making the most delicious and juicy venison steak. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to be too nice. So firstly, what is venison steak? Basically, it's game meat. It could be a buck, it could be a deer, it could be an antelope. Today we're going to be making something called hartebeers. Very popular here in South Africa. And Mm, too delicious. Venison can be tough if you overcook it, so it's very important to nail an internal temperature. You always want a perfect, medium, rare. But before we make the most delicious venison steak, let's head up to the prep board and see what is that flavor profile and technique needed to execute such a delicious dish at home. So in order to make the most delicious venison, there's a few things you need to consider. Flavor and technique. Venison is a gamey meat. So in order to have a really good flavor, there's a few things you need to really season that meat with. First things first, salt. I'm going to be using kosher salt. Any type of good coarse salt will do. As soon as meat hits a hot pan, you're going to be losing around 30% of that salt. So very important to use a good coarse salt to season your meat. Next is always a must and that is pepper. Pepper is very important when it comes to meat. It really gives it that nice fiery taste. Next we have the aromatics. So it's so important to have a fragrant piece of meat that smells good and really brings out that depth of flavor. So aromatics, most common, garlic, rosemary and thyme that we're going to throw in that pan at the end. When cooking any type of steak, especially red meat, always make sure you have your aromatics. And that is it for the flavor profile. So as you can see, it is so simple. Salt, pepper and your aromatics. Once you perfect this basic flavor profile, then you can move on and experiment with different type of spices. But for now, make sure you get this right before adding anything to that venison. So next is technique. The most fundamental part when it comes to making any type of dish is the technique that we apply. First things first is a cast iron pan. Whenever I cook meat, it's always on a cast iron pan, mostly because of its heating properties. You want a pan that retains heat, that holds heat, especially when you want to sear off some meat and give it a nice crust on that outside. Next is the type of oil that we're going to be using. We're going to be using canola oil. Now, if you watch my previous videos when I made the steak, whenever you cook at high heat, you cannot use olive oil because of its smoking point. You want something to handle a high smoking point, which is vegetable oil, canola oil. Next is the internal temperature of that meat. Whenever you eat a type of red meat, you want it to be medium rare, especially when it comes to steak, venison. You want that nice, pink center so in order to have an internal temperature of around 60 to 70 degrees celsius you have to pay attention to your cooking time so for venison is a little bit different from a normal piece of steak it is very important not to overcook venison this is a tough meat that can dry out very fast so you need to make sure you monitor that piece of meat once it's on that pan the best time to cook venison especially on a gas stove is around two minutes on one side as the first cook once you flip it over one and a half minutes for the second side anything over could overcook your meat 30 seconds can really do some damage the next thing we need to do is once it's on the second side of its cooking on the last 30 seconds we want to baste it with our button aromatics and last but not least on the technique side is that resting period. It's so important to keep that meat resting for a certain period of time if you want that perfect pink center. I normally rest a venison for around six minutes which gives me a perfect and juicy steak. And that is it on the technique side. So we have our flavor profile, we have the technique. Now we are able to execute a venison dish and make the most delicious and juicy tender piece of meat. So let's get to it. Why don't I add in a bonus and that will be cauliflower puree. Cauliflower puree. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to be too nice. Having a juicy game meat with a nice puree is just going to be... Anyways, let's get to it. So now you've seen the flavor profile and the technique needed to make the venison steak. Let's put it to a test. I have two beautiful pieces of Hartebeer's venison steak. First things first is seasoning. We spoke about seasoning, salt. I'm going to be using kosher salt, Himalayan salt, perfectly fine sea salt, perfectly fine. As long as it's a little bit coarse, some pepper, black pepper, a bit of a dab, 
always get that salt and pepper in the meat wipe the edges with the extra salt and pepper on the board just turn up the heat really high heat you want that cast iron piping hot you want to sear it out quickly and get that nice crust on the outside i'm going to throw in some canola oil poor antelope mm -mm -mm. then we come to the most important step that is to monitor the pan with a time two minutes on one side one and a half minutes on the other side grab your mobile phone set your timer to two minutes and now i'm going to throw in that steak on that hot pan Alrighty. There we go. So make sure you prep your aromatics before you throw in the steaks because the time is so limited. You don't want to flip over and then finding your thyme and your rosemary and your garlic. Make sure that is already ready. So I have my thyme, I have my rosemary and I have some garlic in here. I'm going to chuck that in when I turn over the steak on the last minute. Mm -mm -mm. It smells so good up in here. Woo -hoo -hoo. Mm. For those that do not eat beef, this is a perfect alternative. Still very juicy, still very tender, very similar to beef. Pair this with some good vegetables, a good mash, and you are on your way to having the most delicious venison steak at home. Turn the steak over. Now, for one and a half minutes. Very important. In the meantime, grab your butter, throw that inside. Aromatics. Always watch. Whenever time hits a hot pan, it splashes. So just keep away. That's why you need something quite long so you don't get hot oil splashed on you. Turn this off. Get the steak nice and brown. Now I'm gonna drop that lovely juice. Too nice. Oh my god. Always use two hands, cast irons are quite heavy. And there we have it, two perfectly seared venison steaks. Now, the most important part, letting it rest. Letting it rest for at least six minutes to get the juices flowing inside. In the meantime, let's get that cauliflower puree on the stove. Cauliflower puree, very simple, very quick, pairs up very well with venison, has a nice creamy texture to it. Let's make some puree. I've already cut up some cauliflower pieces. So as you can see, quite small. First thing I want to do is throw in a knob of butter. Once the butter is melted, I'm gonna throw in that cauliflower, give it a good stir. We're gonna throw in some milk. So we want the cauliflower to actually cook in that milk. You don't have to put too much of milk, just to cover at least half. The missus is very hungry today, so she cannot wait. Once you bring that up to a boil, cover it up, shove all that heat inside, just leave it for around 10 minutes. Some people season the puree, you don't have to. Some people add in white pepper. Some people add in salt. It's all up to you. The first time I made it, I felt like I needed to add in some salt. So today I'm going to be adding in some fleur de salt, French salt. Let me grab that blender because we need to blend the cauliflower while it's still hot. Before I throw it into the blender, I need to take up the milk, put it through a strainer and get all the milk out. Throw this back in the pan. We want that milk for later. Man, there's so many planes today. What the hell is happening? Like we in the middle of a pandemic, god damn it. Throw in some extra milk, not too much. You need a super smooth. Nice looking little bit like mash. We don't want that, we want a super smooth puree. <laughs> this looks so creamy. Super smooth baby. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that is good. Now, let's transfer this into a bottle. You can use this as multiple times. Keep it in the fridge, reheat it when you need to use it, and it is too nice. Okay, it'll be a messy job. I had a funnel and I used it for something else. You can use this with any type of meat. It goes really well with red meat, scallops, seafood. Let's see what we have here. Oh my God, look at that pinkness, baby. Oh yes, oh yes. That is perfect medium red. Holy man. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be fancy, take a beautiful piece of meat, lay that down on top of your puree. And there you have it people. The most delicious and juicy venison steak made at home. It smells so good. That puree is so smooth and delicious. This venison steak has a good sear, nice peppery flavor, and that salt is just on point. The missus is going to love this. Just have a look. If you could only smell this. Whew. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This brings it to the last video of the first season. New season coming up very soon. Cannot wait. We're just going into winter, which means date night meals. I'm talking short rib, oxtail, pork belly, all of the most tastiest dishes made at home. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And when the second season is up, you will be notified. Let me just quickly steal a piece. Mm -mm -mm. Damn, the seasoning is on point and I cannot wait for you to try this at home. That is it from me guys and I will see you on the next one.